So what did we see here? We easily get a factor 3 between different trivial ways of implementing the very same function. And that is quite typical. And it is another example of how deep learning works so well because we have lots of places where we gain ourselves a factor of 3 or maybe a factor of 10 by doing certain things, right? We are a really big community now. We have awesome developers that work on everything from the hardware side to algorithms to good act ways of implementing activation functions. And by being this community that all collaborates, we're incredibly effective. And that is why if you look at all the players in the deep learning space, they're generally really enthusiastic about this collaborative, open code sharing way of running deep learning. Deep learning works so well because lots of tricks came together. So let's dive right into classification. What is classification? We have inputs and labels, xi and yi. And in the case of classification, the yi happen to be integers. Now, what do we need? We need the right transfer function and we need the right loss function. And let's see what we can do about them. So the output. I want to know for an, a given input xi, which of the possible outputs could be the right one. Ultimately, that means that at best, I can hope to have a probability distribution over these integers. Of course, I hope to be right. I hope that I have an algorithm that is usually right, but no algorithm is perfect. And as we discussed before, going into a domain where we can approximate how good our algorithm is, is a very good idea. So how can we convert the output of a neural network that is going to be continuous between minus infinity and infinity into a vector of possible probabilities? Now just to be clear, we want to in the end have a vector that has the number of classes as its length and the probability that this item is of that class, an estimate, as the entrance to that. So for that, we use the softmax function. What do we have there? We have e to the zi. Now what will that do? It will take large values and make this be very large. Small uh, values up to negative infinity. Now at negative infinity will reach zero. Um, so e to the zi will produce a value between zero and infinity. And now we divide that by all of, by that same value for all the possible classes, zj. What will that mean? We have all these values, small or large, we divide it by the sum of all of them, which means that at the end, every value will be between 0 and 1. No, because like 1 uh, would be the largest value if the sum is entirely dominated by 1 of the e to the zj. It will be between 0 and 1, and um, it will add up to 1. So this is the properties of probabilities. Now, given that we now have a way of formulating a distribution of probabilities, what is the right cost function here? Well, in a way, we want the predicted probabilities to be close to reality. Now, in reality, one of them is true and the others are not. Now, there's some realities where reality might be, I'm not given ground truth, uh, number three was the right answer, but there can be cases where even ground truth or like the kind of labels that we get have uncertainty, but like ignore that for the moment. So the target vector y can now be a one hot encoded uh, vector where yij is 1 if and only if xi belongs to class j and otherwise it's 0. Now, now like what that means is that if, we, if I have lots of inputs um, uh, with, with index i, uh, the output uh, or like the target vector is encoded as a matrix where for each input i, I have a probability of output j that is zero everywhere apart from one where truth is. 
Now what we want to do is we want to have a cost function that measures how similar the two of them are. And this is cross entropy here. So let's see what we have there. We will have um, uh, we will have in on the inner side uh, of uh, of that uh, equation we have sum over j y i j of log n of x i j, where n is the output of the neural network. So what that means is we effectively no like keep in mind that all the y i j that are wrong are zero and only the one that's right is one. So this sum boils down to the log probability that the network this way assigns to item i being of class j. So only that estimate matters of the, of the outcome that actually happened in that case. And then of course we will have a sum of all over all uh, the data points that we'll have here. Now like we will sum from i is 1 to s, which is the number of samples that we have. Now there's a warning that is really important, which is PyTorch combines softmax and cross entropy into one function. I've seen a good number of people run softmax and then put it into the cross entropy function in such a way that softmax was run twice, which of course won't work well very well. Okay, so this is now how we can take the problem of classification and formulate it by a uh, as a loss function that really makes sense to us. Now, I want to give a bit of an aside here because it's very important in real-world applications. I told you before that what we often do when we do modeling is we try and use a loss function that says how good is our model and we want to have a model that is ultimately working well. So we use log p as how good our model is in a way as a starting point. Now, if I optimize on the wrong cost function, I will always do worse than if I optimize on the right function. So for example, the payoff function for me might be I take my deep learning system, I build it into a production system, and whenever I get it right, I make money for my company. So the payoff function in that case is how often do I get it right? So now we are we are in a conundrum. Now like I like log probability because it's smooth and it will optimize really well. But my ultimate payoff function is how often do I get it right, which isn't even differentiable. So what could I do in this case? So one standard pr uh, procedure, and you will generally get a lot of mileage out of that, is uh, you, you want to in the end optimize for what matters. But what you can then do is you can optimize for the log probability first, and then you do a second optimization where you then fine tune the model so that it's as good as possible and at getting as many of the items right as possible. You will generally get some advantage of that. Now we're ready. Now like what we have is we have a function, which is the neural network up to the softmax. And we have a loss function, which is cross entropy here. And we just choose an optimizer. We will learn a lot more about optimizers next week. And now it's time to take some data and train it on the data. And what we will do is we will use a simple 2D case because we can meaningfully visualize it and learn from it. So now, train classification on the spiral data set.